Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. Welcome back. This is a continuation in the series Reloading 101, Part 2. In Part 1, we talked about Reloading 223, and we talked about case prep, cleaning, inspecting, trimming those cases, camphering, deburring, and sorting. In Part 2, we're going to talk about load development. We're going to prime the cases. We're going to dispense powder charges into those cases and seat bullets. And then we'll go out and shoot what we've loaded and we'll video that as well. In the description below, there's a link to the part one video on case prep. Also in the description below, there's a link to a video in which I had modified a bullet that I had purchased, a Hornaday 75 grain ELD match bullet that when loaded to the correct length of 2.39 inches was too long to fit my magazine. So I modified that bullet by removing the ballistic tip. I then went out and tested that load to see how it would perform. So in this video, I will actually remake that same load using the same powder, the same charge weight, but I'll be using, instead of a 75 ELD match that's been modified, I'll be using a 75 grain boat tail hollow point. And we will load those, test them, and see how they compare. So before we begin reloading, we need to know what it is that we're going to be reloading. So in my record book, I've made a list of what it's going to be. It will be a 75 grain boat tail hollow point bullet made by Hornaday. We're going to be shooting 10 of each load. Uh, we'll have charge weights. We'll be using an Accurate 2460 powder. These are the estimated velocities based on the book, not based on a chronograph. We'll be using a CCI 450 primer seated at a 2.25 overall length. We'll have charges ranging from 21 grains to 23.3 grains. And the numbers over here will correspond to the targets. I will have a target number numbered for each one of these loads that we'll be doing. So there'll be 10 rounds at 21 grains, 10 rounds at 21.2, 10 rounds at 21.5, and so forth and so on. So let's get started with priming some cases. In case you haven't noticed by now, I'm a big fan of Frankfurt Arsenal tools and reloading equipment. And so we're going to be using their handheld priming tool, which comes with shell holders and parts for loading many calibers, but we're going to be reloading 223 today. And we'll be using the CCI 450 small rifle Magnum primers. So what you do is you take this primer holder, it slides off, slide these open, set them on the tray like that. Not all of them are, are righted, so you shake it a little bit and you turn these so that they're all oriented with the cup side up. Then you slide on the cover insert the primer holder into the priming tool and there's a little gate right here that you can see that slides open to allow the primers to fall into the chamber where they can then be seated into the bullets. So we insert the bullet into the case holder like so, squeeze, and we have a primed case. And you can actually feel it seat when it goes in and seats. You can tell when it bottoms out. There's also an adjustment wheel on here for to adjust your seating depth, lower or less. And there you have it. 
So we're going to prime 100 of these and then we will come back and we will charge these with powder. So all of the cases have been primed and we're now ready to charge those cases with powder. So we want to make sure that the weight is correct. And so on each row of 10, I said we would be loading 10 bullets at each charge weight. I put a piece of yellow tape on the loading block and I've marked the charge weight on that tape to make sure that we stay on track and load those correctly. I'll be using the RCBS M500 beam scale and I've already zeroed that out to make sure that our charge weights will be accurate. And so the last time I loaded with this particular powder, I used 23.3 grains. That was the last charge. And this is accurate 2460 powder that we'll be using. And so we will start here. 23.3 is the maximum charge weight for this particular powder. And so we will start there and work our way down since the dispenser should already be set for 23.3 grains. As I mentioned, the scale has already been zeroed out, as you can see here. And the way this scale is set up, you can see it's set on zero. And each of those small marks represents five grains. So we're gonna go ahead and move this to five, 10, 15, 20 here. So on this side, we have from zero to five grains. And so each of these numbered increments is for one entire grain. And you can see that it's subdivided into smaller marks. So this is gonna be loaded at 23.3. So we're gonna move this over to 23.123. And then we're gonna throw a powder charge that will balance this out. We'll go ahead and fill the powder hopper before we get started. This is accurate 2460. It's a very fine ball powder. I don't know if you can see this or not. But it's extremely fine. And it measures very consistently. So once we've set our charge weight, we can dispense directly into the case without having to measure each one individually. So I just dispensed a charge. And you should be able to see this. It's pretty much right on the mark. So we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna put this back into the hopper and then we will just dispense directly in base. So you lift it to charge it and let it down to drop the charge. You lift it and then you drop it. You lift it up and you drop it. Now it's a good idea to check periodically to make sure that it hasn't changed. So every 10 or so, I will check that. So I'm going to drop a charge in here. And weigh it. and it's still right on the money. So we'll charge the rest of these and then we'll come back and seat the bullets. To adjust the charge weight on the dispenser, you have a little lock nut here on the side and you have this metering adjustment 
if you twist it to the right that will increase the charge if you twist it to the left that will decrease it so we're trying to get to 22.8 so this is kind of a trial and error thing but I've got my scale set to 22.8 so I drop a charge place the charge on the scale and in this case it's a little bit low so I'm going to loosen that nut increase it just slightly lock it back Drop another charge, measure it, still just a little bit low, it doesn't need much at all, so increase it just a tad, place this back in the hopper, dispense another charge, and weigh it. a second for it to slow down but you can see right there right on the money so this is good to go so we'll charge another 10 so I just loaded the last 10 and after every 10 rounds I would drop another charge and put it on the scale and every time that scale would be exactly on zero so this ball powder measures very well so you can load directly into the cases with these and I just check after each 10 to verify and after each 10 they were always uh, exactly on target so now that the cases are all charged, we want to do a visual inspection and make sure that every case has powder. If you were to accidentally double charge a case, you would know that because the powder would overflow the case and spill out everywhere and make a mess. And you would know that you had accidentally overcharged that case. It's also possible to skip one which could also create a problem because if you fail to charge a case and you go ahead and seat the bullet in that, when you fire that round, what's going to happen is there's enough power in that primer to dislodge the bullet and send it forward and probably jam into the lands of your rifle, which would ruin your day at the range because then you would have to stop shooting, come home and remove that bullet from your barrel before you could proceed any further. Now we're ready to seat the bullets. And the nice thing about this lead breech lock system is it has this quick change die where you just press a button and you can release that. Then we take our seating die. There's a little notch right there. If you can see that. You insert it thus, and you turn it, and that locks into place. So I recently seated uh, a different bullet, so I'm going to back this out because we don't know what this, how the seating depth is going to be for this because this is a different bullet. This is going to be the Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow point match bullets. So. I like to spread these out on a towel. The towel keeps them from rolling off the bench. Makes it a little easier to get to. When all of the uh, cases have been checked, we've made sure that they're all charged with powder. So we're now ready to seat the bullets. So I'll take one. insert it into the case holder. We also need our calipers for this. So go ahead and turn those on. I'll seat the bullet, bring it down, and we're going to seat these at 2.25 inches. 
that's 2.32 so it needs to come down a little more so this is kind of trial and error Two point two five four, and it's okay if they're within one or two thousandths. And there we are at two point two five zero. So we've got this set right now. So we're going to go ahead and seat the rest of these. And again, because of the difference in the case length and how the shoulder was pushed back, there may be some variation in these. Like that one is two point four nine or two point two four nine, so a thousandths under but that's going to be just fine. Notice too, that once I seat the bullet, it goes back into the same place in the loading block that it came from because all of these are marked with the powder charge for that case, for that round. So we want to make sure that we don't mix them up and keep them separated. Something else I do, which I find helpful, is when I lay my bullets out, I take a minute to turn them all the same way so they're all pointing the same direction. It just makes it a little easier when I have to pick it up and set it in place. There's less likelihood of accidentally dropping it. And at my age, having to bend over to pick something up off of the floor is just a major annoyance. So having these all turned the same way just makes it easier to pick up and insert into the case. So there we have 100 rounds loaded and ready to go. Now, if we were going to be shooting these through a semi-automatic rifle like an AR, there would be one additional step. We would want to go back and crimp these to help secure the bullet into the case. That would help with feeding and avoid possible jams. Uh, if you're using a semi-auto, but in this case, I'm going to be shooting these through my Ruger American 223 bolt action rifle. So there's no need to crimp these. A question that you'll need to answer is how are you going to package these and identify them so that you'll know what's here? I've heard some reloaders say that they will use a Sharpie and they will actually mark each case on the case with a Sharpie. Well, when you've got 100 rounds, to me that seems very tedious. If they're all the same and there's no difference, then you can use a case like this. And I've just labeled it with the date that it was made, the primer, the fact that it's for an AR, the bullet weight, the charge, and the powder that I used. Also, some people like to use baggies. I use these Ziploc baggies and I will also label those with the date that I made them, the case, the case length, the primer, the fact that this one is for an AR, the grain weight, the powder charge, the type powder, and I also add the velocity on there. But in this case with these, I'm going to be taking these to the range this week. So what I did is I found a deal on some magazines my Ruger American uses the same magazines that you use in an AR. So you saw this, my load data, and how I've got the charges numbered from one to 10. So what I'm going to do is this is magazine number 10. So I'm going to take this 23.3 charge and I'm gonna load all these into this magazine and so when I go to the range, I won't have to stop and reload. I'll be ready to go when I finish one group. I'll just pop another magazine in and I'll be ready to go. So that's something to think about. Thank you for taking time to watch. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas or suggestions or want to share how you do things maybe a little differently, please be sure and leave a comment below. Thanks again.